Hi, I'm Gina. I'm a teacher at Still Life Ceramics and I just want to show you a few little tips and tricks that'll get you ready for your first class. So the first thing that I'll show you is my work area. Um, you don't need a whole lot and we've provided you with some tools, but additional things I like to have are a little towel to clean up my stuff, a little cup of water, a larger sponge for cleanup later, and you want some kind of a work surface. Um, these drywall, drywall boards from the hardware store work really well. These come in bigger pieces, but you can cut them up really easily. Um, I actually have a piece of sort of rigid canvas covering my table. If you have a piece of plywood laying around, um, even a cardboard box that you break down, cardboard is a nice work surface. Do you just want something to protect your table because clay does get a little bit messy and we don't want you, know, you making a huge mess in your home. Um, so when you're ready to cut clay out of the bag, there's a sort of methodical way to do it. Instead of um, just grabbing the clay with your hands, you want to cut it off in nice, neat chunks. So um, we have these wire tools in ceramics, um, but if you don't have one of these, a piece of dental floss works really, really well. So you just open up your bag. And I'm going to take whatever I have to cut and I just cut a slice like that. If this is more than I think I want, then I just cut a smaller piece until I have the right size piece of clay that I want to work with. When you're done, you want to close up the bag right away because you want your clay to stay nice and moist. You don't want it to dry out. So I'm closing it and I'm securing it with a twist tie. And as you work with the clay, you don't want to incorporate any air. Air bubbles can cause cracks in your finished pieces and if it's a large enough pocket of air, your piece can actually explode in the kiln. So you really don't want air. So just keep that in mind as you work. You don't want to fold the clay over on itself. You want to gently smooth without trapping any air inside of your clay. Next, I want to show you how to make slip. And slip is basically like clay glue. We use it when we attach two pieces together, like a handle on a mug. And all slip is, is clay and water mixed to a brushable consistency. The easiest way to make slip is taking some dried clay, you ground it up into a fine powder. And I'm just gonna drizzle some water on top. And this is just a chopstick I'll use to mix. And you just stir it up until it's nice and smooth. Maybe a little bit more water here. There's no one correct consistency for slip. So if yours is a little bit runny, that's fine. If yours is a little thicker, that's okay too. So I would just mix this a little bit more and then you're ready to use that as glue on one of your pieces. Clay that hasn't been fired is called greenware and there's three stages of greenware clay. There is wet clay, how it comes right out of the bag. It's nice and smushy. We call this plastic because it can stretch. Um, once a little bit of the moisture has left the clay, we call that leather hard. I can still feel that it's moist, it feels cool to the touch, but this retains its shape when I hold it. It's not quite as smushy as it was before, but it's still moist and I can manipulate it in various ways. When all of the moisture has left the clay, this is called bone dry. This doesn't feel cool like the leather hard piece feels anymore. Um, it feels kind of powdery. Bone dry clay is very fragile, so when your project is in this state, be very, very careful with how you handle it. If you're in the middle of working on something and you want to come back to it later, you want to wrap your piece up in plastic and all you do, any kind of plastic, I like thin, uh, dry cleaner plastic is great. This is a waste basket liner, produce bags from the grocery store, anything like that. So you just want to take your piece and completely enclose it in plastic and make sure there's nowhere for air to get in. 
That way this will still be nice and in the same stage uh, when I come back to work on it. If you want something to dry a little bit, you can always cover the piece loosely in plastic and allow some air to come in. Uh, I recommend when you've finished a piece, giving it a little bit of time to dry slowly. So instead of leaving it out and just letting it dry right away, especially in this heat in Los Angeles, things can dry very fast. Um, I like to maybe wrap it up for a half a day or a day and then let it dry slowly, loosely covered in plastic. The reason I do this is because things are a little bit more likely to warp and crack if they dry very fast. So just a little bit, you know, slow down the drying time and you're good to go. If you have some wet scraps after your clay session, um, you can still reuse these. And I recommend trying not to let these dry out too much as you work. They're a lot easier to reclaim that way. Sometimes I have a little piece of plastic that I just put my little bits and bobs underneath so it stays wet. Um, but all I'll do really is just carefully squeeze them together. Try not to trap any air. If it feels like it's the same wetness, you can just stick this right back in the bag. Um, if it feels like it's dried out a little bit, I'll just sort of dip the ends in some water and give it a little squish and fold it back on itself and maybe give it another dip in water and do this a couple of times. That will rehydrate it. And as long as you're careful not to incorporate any air when you do this, you're good to go. And then I'll just put this back in the bag and I can reuse this later. And lastly, uh, here's a quick cleanup tip. Clay is not very good for plumbing. We don't want to get clay down the drain. So before I go to the sink with my dirty hands and my tools, I have a large bowl of water that I'm going to use to rinse everything off in. So here's like my paintbrush. I've got my big cleanup sponge. I'll give everything a little first wash in here. Wipe down your tools. Rinse my hands off. And now that my hands are mostly clean, I can go to the sink and not have to worry about getting anything gnarly down my plumbing. With this water, you can let it settle. The clay particles are heavy, so they'll settle to the bottom overnight. Um, and you can either very carefully pour the clear water that's on top down the drain, um, and then either just throw what's left at the bottom into the trash, or I pour mine outside until there's like a patch of dirt out back. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.